Hi, Jeff Rick here with theCUBE. We are on the ground in San Francisco, California at the Data Science Summit. Kind of a small show in the, uh, in the Mary and Marquis, downtown San Francisco. We wanted to come up, get a feel for what's going on, and we're joining this next segment by George Gilbert, who's doing all the interviews. So, uh, George, what do you think of the, uh, the show? Um, I thought it was actually surprisingly uh, mature and sophisticated, considering how early we are in the, di in the machine learning life cycle. Of course, we had a lot of um, vendors and advanced practitioners here. Um, for the last several years, the sort of the term of art was data lake, and that's really just the jumping off point for machine learning, where there's a natural place for it to fit next to a classic data warehouse, and in the data lake, you really put all your raw data. You don't refine it. You put it there, the data scientists work with it and say, okay, in all its sort of uh, raw form, they say, this is what this means, this is how this uh, data set relates to that data set, and um, the data warehouse, of course, is that curated collection for historical performance reporting. So very different pur uh, purposes. Yeah, we were pretty lucky we had, we had Comcast on, we had Bosch on, um, so we had some we had some practitioners on, and then of course we had a couple of vendors on. But Georgina, you know, we've been busy. We've been running. We we were at Hadoop Summit. We were at Spark Summit. Um, how does this all fit kind of within the whole big data world as well as you know visualization and all those bits and pieces and components? Um, I think this was the tip of the spear in terms of the sophistication of the problems these um, customers are solving and the vendors who are here are the ones helping those customers solve those problems. So what we're seeing here today is probably what we'll see at Hadoop Summit several years from now. Spark, Spark Summit is also a little further ahead of the Hadoop Summit because they're attacking um, uh, pretty sophisticated problems. The interesting thing was when you ask about the, the customer journey, um, it's pretty universal where everyone says, uh, we start with an inventory of the data. You know, you can't solve the problem unless you have the data first. Um, and then, once you have that as an inventory, you have to go to the business guys and so get some sort of ranked order of the problems they want to solve. And the reason you go to the business guys is, it's not always the hardest problems that are the highest value problems. Right, they might right. say it's something simple that has a lot of value and you have to match can I solve that problem with the data I have on hand? Yeah, it's an interesting point because I, I sat in on the Comcast keynote and, and his one of the big use cases they were talking about is just serving up the right uh, suggested movies for you right. as you sit and you're going through your on demand and really it was all about optimizing for cash and speed of delivery of what graphics are going to show right. and do they hit it right. So that, at first blush that doesn't seem like a very important problem. Right. Clearly it is, they're investing a lot, a lot behind because that. It, the, the core is it helps the consumer consume more Comcast content, which is what their business is all about. Yeah. And so it might not be a very difficult problem, um, and I, I, I hesitate to rush to judgment on that, but it's a very important problem. Right. D not difficult in perception of like a really hairy, gnarly math problem. Right but right. difficult in terms of optimization for all the things. And he said, as the number of titles grows and they add more data to the algorithm, it is a big, hairy problem. And then he gets into this caching optimization, which do you choose to cache or not cache right. within your millions and millions of choices. Right, and a similar problem is we see in the music world now, um, in, in the past when we downloaded music, we had maybe a few thousand songs of our own. Now when you stream, music, you have 30 million songs in the dialogue, the user interface and the technology behind the UI has to change because you know you can't navigate 30 million songs, it has to help you figure out what's right for you. And that's much more of a machine learning problem than it is a storage and navigation problem. So really, if the, if the machine learning is, is happening well, it's almost, it's almost uh, unseen, invisible. right? It's almost invisible. Yes. Of course, I think somebody said at one of our shows, you know, if, if, uh, if, if, if everything's working well, it's magic, right? And if it doesn't work well, it's creepy. Right. <laughs> one thing that's also worth um, uh, mentioning is that uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, customers and vendors are gravitating towards Spark one of its, its probably distinguishing characteristic is that 
all the elements of Spark, the machine learning, the streaming, the graph processing, they're all tightly integrated, so it's much easier to build very powerful solutions. But then you ask, okay, so does that mean Hadoop's less relevant? And the answer is not necessarily, because Hadoop takes uh, care of the resource management in terms of yarn, so that you don't have different applications stepping on each other. It takes care of the storage, at least today in H HDFS, and, um, and then it does things like it manages the ingestion of data, like with, with Kafka and Scoop. So it's not like an either or problem, and many of us like to pitch it as a war between the two, but for now it's coexistence. Okay, so it's a small show, it's, it's pretty new. What are some of the mile markers you're looking for? What are some of the next things that people should be looking for in terms of adoption? Um, I guess I would like to see um, the skill sets that are now centered among the very sophisticated customers and the vendors who can um, transfer those skills to other customers start to diffuse more widely. And I think what we'll see is um, more self-service tools from vendors like uh, Databricks or others in the Spark ecosystem where what used to be uh, usable as a single vendor, uh, I'm sorry, a single machine tool can now work across a cluster. Because making it work at scale was a very difficult problem. Making it work on a single machine was easier. Now if we can bring the two together, we can have ease of use and scale. Excellent. Well, I think that's a great last word, George. So uh, thanks for coming out and spending some time and talking to the data scientists. He's George Gilbert with Wikibon. I'm Jeff Frick with theCUBE. Thanks for watching from San Francisco.